Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to show you how to speed up your Mac Studio or your MacBook Pro that uses an M1 or M2 chip and Final Cut Pro and how to boost your speeds with your exports. Here we go, check it out. All right, so number one is gonna be using your using an external drive versus an internal drive that's going to be number one and i think that will be somewhat paramount to everything if you don't have the storage this might not be an option but i do have some options for you so stay tuned here i'll tell you in just a second now a lot of people will you leave it on here and they'll edit from this plugging it right into their mac studio or their macbook pro and they leave the files in place and that works to a degree but that will slow you down and so here's the thing if you can put all of your files so say you shoot a 60 minute clip right um, and you want to put that you want to edit that i would say here's number one is you want to actually export that or import that rather onto your Mac Studio or your MacBook Pro onto the internal hard drive. So you definitely need some space. I have a four terabyte Mac Studio, so I do have some space that I leave open. I leave open about two terabytes just for video editing, so there's plenty of bandwidth. I can put files in there. Once I export it to its final product, it's usually about 20 gigabytes, and I will actually put that onto an external hard drive, delete the files, and now I have two terabytes open again. But again, this is going to be your best bet. You put it all onto the internal hard drive and you will see just you will see massive improvements in your editing process. But what you will always also see is that you will see that the export speeds will get a little faster as well, which is what we want. So number one, putting all of your external hard drive files onto your internal hard drive if possible. Now, if that is not possible, you have a MacBook Air maybe with the M2 chip or you have the M1 chip. Maybe you have the new MacBook Pro with the M2 Pro chip, but your hard drive is a 512 gigabyte, right? Well, putting 500 gigabytes of 4K footage on to edit it, I mean, that takes up your whole hard drive. You can't do anything with that, not much anyways. And so then to try to export it, it's just gonna be a huge hassle. So here's the tip that I have for you guys who can't do it because your hard drive is just not big enough is that you want to upgrade your cables, right? With the new MacBook Pro, the Mac Studio, they have Thunderbolt 4 cables, which is a USB-C type cable. They have speeds of up to 40 gigabytes per second. And now you'll see some pretty significant increases just in changing out your cables. And I'll put a link in the description for these cables that I use. They're pretty cheap and affordable. Again, they're more expensive than a basic USB-C cable, but you're gonna see improvements just by changing out your cables there because if you use just a basic USB-C cable um, and you're trying to transport 500 gigabytes of information, 4K footage through that cable to your computer to edit and then it's trying to kick it back out when you're exporting it, this is the bottleneck in the system. This is what will slow it down because if you're not using the right cables, it just will not be able to go fast enough. And so this will be the, the kink in your chain there. So upgrading your cables there to a Thunderbolt 4 will help you um, pretty significantly. So check that out. Um, and I would highly recommend that. But I have a couple other tips for you as well that will go for anyone. The number two thing is there's an app called Compressor that works side by side with Final Cut Pro. It's made by Apple. I believe it costs $50 or so, and you can actually change some things. So I'm gonna open up Compressor here just so you can see. All right, we got Compressor opened. And now what we have is all these different um, export settings. Now what's really cool about Compressor is that you can create your own settings. So say you want to export in 4K, 24 frames per second. Um, you want it in a um, 264 format, whatever you want there. You can actually make your own. And so what I have down here is I have one that I made custom, right? It's accelerated Apple devices at 4K. And this has helped significantly as well. It actually kicks it out into an M4V. Uh, this has increased the export speed significantly for me as well. And so you can create your own. There's ones that are already on here, right? You have YouTube and Facebook up to 4K. Um, that works well as far as what YouTube and Facebook recommend for videos when you're um, uploading them. Um, what I found though with that setting is that it's not the fastest, although for exports, it's not the fastest for exports, but it does work well. Um, but I do like Compressor that you can make your own custom 
um, export settings there. And then once you create it here, you can go into Final Cut Pro and then we hit the export or share button up here and then you'll find that that new setting you created, accelerated Apple devices 4K is in your settings and then I can click that and then we can export that, boom, and then we're good to go. So that is another setting to play around with. Find what works for you. If you have something specific, like, oh, it needs to be um, a dot .mov, you can do that. If it needs to be an MP4 or a M4V or a 264, whatever it needs to be, right? You can set that stuff up in there. But playing around with those will help you find that magic mix that works for your footage as well as your computer and your settings to get that faster export speed. The last one that I wanna go over, and you can do this in Final Cut Pro with some of the settings that are kind of default and they're already in there and programmed. Um, but when you go to, for, for my sake and what I'm trying to go with, right, we're using compressor to make our own um, export settings, is you go over here, right, so you click the one you want, accelerated Apple devices, you have the general tab, right, then go to the video Right, and what we want to use encoder type right here, there's the faster standard quality and then there's also the slower higher quality. Now, a lot of times I, at first I was opting for the slower higher quality thinking, oh, it won't be too slow, right? But what I've found is it's extremely slow. But going here, selecting faster, and standard quality that actually increases the export speeds exponentially and i've found that to be true um, in many cases and that i've been using it in and so you can even do that so say you don't have compressor you don't have the 50 bucks to put into that that's fine All right we go here export we want to go youtube and facebook what you can do is here in the settings right we got our 4k resolution it's technically uhd but here we go, compression, right? Do we want better quality or do we want a faster encode? Well, if you want a faster export speed, you wanna choose faster encode. And again, you will see significant increase in your export speeds that will cut down in half, maybe even more than that, um, for where I went from two to three hours of export to 20 to 30 minutes. Um, so that is huge. And that, that lines up with the reviews that I've seen with the M1 Max and the M2 chips and all that stuff and so definitely make sure you do that here's some bonus tips for you using final cut pro right so if you want to make it a little faster editing process you want to not clog up your hard drive if you have a smaller hard drive you don't have disk space to spare some extra settings that you can go into right go to final cut pro go to settings but here we go in the playback one the first option you see is rendering. Now I know a lot of people want to render because they wanna see that 4K footage as they're editing, but that will slow down your computer significantly um, while you're editing. And so what I would suggest is turn off that back background render because if that's checked on, um, it's gonna be rendering while you're trying to edit, which is gonna slow it down. And um, yeah, just turn that off, I think is a good way to go. And then if you go to our import now this is where it kind of comes down to the user right so files leave files in place is what i have selected but again i take it from the external hard drive i put it onto my internal hard drive so everything that i'm editing from is on my mac studio and so it, it leaves files in place that means it's not making a duplicate copy somewhere else but if you have that copy to library storage location checked what it will do even if you are trying to edit from an external hard drive. It is actually building another copy on your internal hard drive, taking up space. So if you wonder why am I running out of space every time I'm trying to edit a 100 gigabyte file and all of a sudden, you know, 500 gigabytes is taken up, it's because it's building a second copy. It has all those render files in there. Um, and so leaving files in place is what I like because it's not gonna make an extra copy of that. And then some things to note down here that will help speed up your workflow. In the transcode option, right, there's create optimized media, create proxy media. Um, and what that's going to do, it's going to create a lower resolution copy of it when you're editing. And you can do that if you want to. I don't like to do that because I just, again, I don't want more copies of it. I don't want my computer 
doing more tasks in the background when I just want to, to focus on what I'm doing right now. And so you can check those. I check them off. It just helps me again. And I just, and if you know that your shot was good, you checked it out on your camera, it's crisp, everything's good. You know that it's good on your computer as well, even though it might not be rendered all the way, um, it works good. And then of course, the last option there is the destinations. So you can mess with those different settings, right? You can name them different things. So here, export file, the default setting. If you wanted to make a, a default, you can go to formats. Right, Apple devices is typically what uh, actually exports the quickest that I've seen on an Apple device. Not not surprising. Your codec there, right? You got H.264 faster encode, and again you have the 264 better quality. If you want a faster export, choose the faster encode. Again, that's significant, and I haven't noticed much um, difference in quality. So unless you have some like slow-mo, something that's really detailed that you're trying to capture, I think you'll be fine with the faster encode. Um, you can go to the 8-bit, 10-bit, um, <clears throat> different settings in there. Of course, you got your resolution. What do you want to actually export this in? So... Just knowing what you're shooting in and what you're trying to export in, that's important so that it all lines up. Again, that you're not confusing the computer, right? It can obviously downgrade it, but if you have, if you shot it in 1080p and you're trying to export in 4K, you might see some, some issues there. Um, it just doesn't know. It'll make a big file, but it's still 1080p. It'll make a 4K sized file, but it'll be 1080p. And then again, that's going to slow you down. Um, in that. So just knowing what resolution you shot in, what you're trying to export in will help you significantly. There's my tips for you guys. Again, the first one, just to recap, is the external versus internal hard drive. If you can, um, at, as much as possible, use the internal hard drive. It's just optimized. It's ready to go. Number two, compressor, right? Compressor is a side app um, that works um, in tandem a bit with Final Cut Pro. It's made for that and you can create your own export settings there. And so check that out. And then again, the last one there going through the Final Cut Pro settings, make sure you're selecting faster encode versus that better quality. And you will see some significant gains with your Mac uh, Studio, MacBook Pro, MacBook Air with the M1, M2 chips and all those different variations. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, leave a comment in the comments below if you got something to add that would help me or help others. And then if you if this was valuable for you, just drop a like below. Make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video. Peace.